In this video, we're going to be going over five tips to get you pushing the difficulties in Remnant 2. Hi, I'm Dodd. I played Remnant before it was cool. I even subjected myself to the torture that was Kronos before the ashes, and I'm going to be going over five tips that have helped me survive all three games, unless of course it's Kronos before the ashes, in which case it'll be six tips, and we just add in start drinking at any given point. Tip one is pretty damn simple, walking. Now this might seem very simple and kind of self-explanatory, but it actually means a little bit more than what you'd think. Enemy shots are typically, not in all cases, but are typically slow moving projectiles. You don't generally need to dodge these. You can just walk to the left or right, strafing as it were. And just by strafing, you are very easily and quite capable of just avoiding all of these. The infector's range attack in the top right is very slow. You can walk straight out of the way of it. The Root Flyers, although it does have a slight tracking, you can still just walk out of the way of it. The Root Archers, as long as you're not that close, walk out of the way. The Floaty Corpse that throw books at you, you can walk out of the way. The Robots that are found in the Rood, you can walk out of the way of all of them, including the larger ones, although they do have variations, so do be careful. The fey wizard things you can walk out of the way of their projectiles just don't get close the dran ranged units whether they're shotgun or throw an axe at you you can walk out of the way the only caveat is going to be the fey bowman although you can walk out of the way of the initial hit of the bow the bow kind of does explode in fire when it hits the ground which sometimes can still get you so suppose that would depend on your fire resistance. Even a lot of the bosses, the Nightweaver, when she throws her crystal balls at you, you can walk out of the way. The Bloat King, pretty much all of his attacks, you can walk out of the way, minus the big beams. Garhala, the spectral guardian of Narud, the, uh, when he does his shiny balls of death thing, you can literally just walk out of the way. Now obviously this isn't going to be for every boss in the game, so it is worth trying. I have not tested it on all of them. I tried walking out of the way on Legion in Yesha, the big disc thing. Yeah, that doesn't work too well. You die very quick. As well as the Eye Guardian thing, the Custodian Eye, We're trying to walk out of the way of his attacks, this doesn't work. So here we can see me just demonstrating just walking out of the way. It's very easy to do, and I see so many people just start rolling and panicking and it is quite fun to watch initially after you just sort of go dude just just walk just walk most enemies are not actually that big of a threat especially when there's just one of them you only have one thing to pay attention to you can get away with just walking this also does lead on to our second point simply just because of where we're just walking out of the way, we're allowing our stamina to recover, which gives us the most stamina for when we need it. Obviously, we're going to be looking at stamina management. Stamina management is actually a huge thing in games like Remnant, Dark Souls, Elden Ring, etc, etc. Stamina is going to be your main survivability tool. Obviously, enemies do hit very hard, especially if there's a group of them. What perceives to be a one shot is typically two, three, four, five hits hitting you simultaneously. Having stamina in the back pocket is what is going to allow you to get out of there and at least mitigate some of those hits, either through iframing or just getting out of the way. This means don't spam your dodge. Try and get used to calculating and realizing what is hitting you and when admittedly this is probably the largest cause of frustration in games like this trying to get the iframe and it just not working i get it it's a ball ache it's frustrating it's very annoying however finding a way to get used to it is going to be your best option if you want to start pushing harder difficulties to unlock the shop items for Brabus or potentially either doing a hardcore run on veterans so that you're able to get savior. 
A handy trick when it comes to managing your stamina is understanding the slide. It's a key part of going into speed running as well as hardcore runs, simply just because when it comes to neutral dodging and just rolling, your encumbrance has a part to play in your stamina consumption, except for slides, whether you're wearing no armor or engineer armor. Your slide will cost the same amount of stamina regardless. So getting used to the slide, which does also have an iframe, is going to be a huge part in understanding your stamina consumption. For the next one on the list, we have health regen. This is a weird one, and it is really going to mostly depend on the difficulty you are playing on, as well as how you play and what your build is overall designed to do. However, typically, in general, health regen is worth more than more health or armor simply just because you can reposition yourself and with good stamina management you can get out of the way regening the health that that hit took this also means that you're able to mitigate the amount of times that you use your relics or dragon hearts for those that are older and played this game beforehand you can use these in a more desperate time of need. Stocking up on root water, which will give you 0.75 health per second, but it lasts for 60 minutes. You can see it in the uh, bottom of my UI. It's got 55 minutes currently on it, and then a ring icon, and then a reload icon, which has just disappeared. This is going to be a very huge part of your health regen. It lasts 60 minutes. They are quite expensive, but you can utilize either the loathsome farm or the Yasha farm to stock up on your scraps to get these. There is also the blood root consumable, which lasts for 30 seconds, but these will regenerate 1.5 health per second in total over 30 seconds. This is 67.5 health regen. And if you're being sneaky like I am using the tranquil heart, this will passively regen two health per second, which essentially doubles this giving us 127.5 health over 30 seconds. And if I decide to use the Tranquil Heart itself by activating it, I get 255 health over 30 seconds. It's a little bit silly, but this is worth in the long run so much more than just adding in more health or damage mitigation. That being said, if you are struggling with a particular part and you are just being one shot, obviously health regen here is not going to help you. The only real time, which is admittedly the vast majority of the time, where regen is going to outperform more health or more armor, is going to be when you're just not straight up being one shot. If you have a chance to move and you have a chance to get away adding in your stamina management along with a variety of traits such as regrowth which is 1.5 health per second and siphon up which is three percent of your base damage being returned to you as health you can actually be pretty damn survivable especially if you're utilizing a weapon such as enigma simply just because it will hit multiple targets you will get multiple health returns for example without utilizing the blood root which is 1.5 seconds so we just have our 60 minute item which is the root water regrowth siphoner as well as the tranquil heart passive not active i gain 5.51 health per second that doesn't seem like a lot However, what you need to factor in is that after six seconds of us actively being in a fight, which is going to be a decent amount of time, we're already outperforming what maxed out Vigor of plus 30 can do. 5.51 over six seconds is 33.6. Not a lot more, but that's three health more. If we put this to a 10 second fight, we're at 55 more health over 30. So we're getting 25 more health than what Vigor would get. And the argument against damage reduction is just the simple fact of the highest it goes for non-summoner, non-handler builds is going to be 10% minus not including what your armor would give. 
Now, I'm not saying that you should spec 100% all into the regens, regrowth, siphoner, tranquil heart, and spam a bunch of items so that you can have a shit ton of regen like I have. This is just how I personally do it. But having some form of regen, whether it be just the blood water, which is 0.75 health per second, is still going to equate to more, depending on how long the duration of the fight is, than damage mitigation, either from your armor or through traits, as well as overall health. Being able to regain your health back quicker is going to have a higher value. On to number four, which is going to be bottlenecks. This is something we actively avoided in the first game, simply just because we didn't really have an option to deal with large waves of enemies simultaneously. Luckily, in Remnant 2, we have a few archetypes that are pretty damn adept at doing this. Challenger being one, just stamp your foot. Engineer being another, if you have it fully unlocked, you have that pulse thing that sits on the ground, also doubles up as a stupidly overpowered weapon. A lot of the mutators allow us to get more utility and usability out of these weapons, giving us greater usage when bottlenecking. And of course, there is everyone's favorite, Enigma. Why hit one enemy when you can hit all of them? It also procs Overload, which is like the most damaging status in the game. It's utterly ridiculous. Bottlenecks are going to be very, very useful in Remnant 2, where we can literally pile up a group of enemies, hide around a corner, wait for them all to channel through a single point where there's only one way in which they're able to get to us, and then we just let them have it, however we wish to do it. The main reason this is going to be a very important strat in Remnant 2 is simply just because a lot of enemies now like spawning behind you. Once you hit a certain checkpoint or box within a dungeon or room, enemies will spawn essentially in a 360 area, meaning they can come from in front, the sides, or even behind you. And if you're not prepared with an escape plan, you can very quickly get overwhelmed. Having a way to get out of that room, bottleneck them, and then push all of them together at the same time is going to be your best option for dealing with things like this. This is especially present if you go into the castle area in Losum. Those flying bastards are the bane of my existence. They're always behind me and I have no idea how. Finding a nice little corner, putting my back to a wall and then spreading them with Enigma has saved my ass more times than I can count. And for the final one, we have Use Your Death. Now this is quite circumstantial as well as very open-ended it literally means from rather than running back just liquid escape problem solved it also means if you did die understand why you died don't get annoyed at it i know that's hard to do i get frustrated at this game as well i have noticed a few random bugs where i get stuck in a wall or an enemy is stuck in a wall there's also a desync issue that when i'm playing with my wife She's like, there's an enemy directly in your face and it's hitting you. And I'm stood there with no enemy in my face. There's nothing there, but I am dying from something. But I can't hit it. There are annoying issues. I will not deny that. However, the main part for me with this is bosses. I die so many times to bosses, but then the first 20 times, I'm not trying to kill them. I'm running around in a circle, seeing what attacks they have. How often can they do that attack? Where does this attack hit? If I have to get, have a choice of being hit between attack A and attack B, what one will do the least damage and do the least stagger? Do I have an opportunity to get damage in between this hit and that hit? How do enemies act to elevation, as you're about to see here? Most enemies, if you go up, and then drop down they will circle back around before putting pressure on you this thing however just drops down on you which is not what i was hoping for or planning for at all was hoping to uh build up potentially a little bit more mod but because i didn't know that this thing would just drop down on you this is the end result learn from it i died because i tried to use elevation to my advantage it didn't work out Guess what I'm not going to do next time? 
Anyway, this has been fun. I've been Dodd. Have fun. Good luck. Don't die. It's bad for the health. <laughs>